Good morning, sisters and brothers. Thankful that you are able to join us this morning for our online devotional worship. You are welcome to follow along using the prompts on the screen or using the bulletin found on our website. We give thanks to God together this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken." It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise be the Lord. 
Lord. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember it well. In the year 2012, as my wife and I were preparing to be married, about a month before, I had woken up a day like any other day. And I was getting ready for work, getting ready to come in to prepare to serve God's people, to serve each and every one of you in the ways that God has called me to serve. And as I got ready that day, I knew how close I was to being able to celebrate uh, this beautiful gift of marriage that God was about to give to me and my wife that we would be able to share and continue to share even now. And it was just seemingly a good day. I came into the office and then my phone rang. The experience of this day was different for each one of us, my mother and my brother and I. The phone rang for me and it was my mom. And she says, I need you not to panic. And you know when a phone call starts like that, you immediately want to panic. You immediately want to be nervous because what kind of phone call is going to be good when the start is I need you not to panic. She says, Dad had a heart attack. He's in the hospital. I don't know much more. Can you come down today? Now, my parents only live about an hour and a half from where we are in the Bronx. And so, of course, I had to come down. And I said, well, what do you need me to do? And, and yes, I want to come down. And she said, I need you to breathe. I need you to be calm. And I realized that at that moment, my mother who understood the gift of marriage that I was going to celebrate just a month later because she was already in this, it's in this incredible, obviously, state of concern and worry about her beloved husband. My mother needed me to be steady and solid. And so I, I said, okay, mom, well, I'll go pick up Nani. That's what we call my grandmother, my dad's mom. I said, and we'll come down. I said, I think she needs to know. I think we need to all be there. My mom says, okay, do that. Come down, drive safely. So I did. And a thousand things ran through my mind. These incredible fears of losing my dad. My dad, my whole life has been a good dad. 
one that, that I can uh, honestly say that I've cherished his relationship with me and, and the ways that he raised me, the ways that he cares for me. In many ways, I desire to, to follow in his example with my own children. And so this was something that was incredibly heavy and incredibly worrisome. The fears just piled on over and over again. I, I was not ready to lose my dad a month away from my wedding. And, and what about the kids that I was hoping to have? And these kinds of things were running through my mind as I drove to pick up my grandmother. And my grandmother got in the car, and of course, grandma's here now. And so she is always a calming presence. And yet, of course, she was on edge. And so I realized, again, I had to maintain some steadiness in it all. And I did, thankfully. Looking back, certainly not by my own power, strength, or might. And we drove down, we stayed calm, we even listened to some of my favorite Christian music songs, some hymns, and, and, and all types of music. And we got to the hospital. And we walked upstairs where dad, thankfully, had already been stabilized. And when we walked in the room, he was laying flat on, uh, on a hospital bed. He had to because of the heart attack and because of the surgery that they had to do. And he said, hey, bud. And of course, emotions welled up. Sorry if <laughs> you see the emotions coming out right now. Uh, but thankfully, I was able to uh, even be steady then. I didn't sob, I, didn't be over I wasn't overcome or overwhelmed with emotion. I was able to be strong, and for the moment, my fears were allayed. Now, of course, those fears kept popping up. The fears popped up as we heard about all the different things that they had to do, all the things they were concerned about for my father, and the surgeries that may need to follow or not follow, depending on what might happen. The concerns popped up as they said, well, we have to figure out whether or not he can travel to go to your wedding because, of course, the man just had a heart attack. These fears were just stacking on top of each other, one over another. They were like a shroud of evil, a shroud of suffering, a shroud of worry. And over and over they piled up, and we prayed and prayed and asked God to help us and, and did everything we could do, or at least we thought we could do, and thankfully, everything seemed to work out. And then the night before my wedding, my dad and I are sitting in a room and we're arguing about something ridiculous. <laughs> and I laugh about it because I look back and you know how sons and dads are. And we're arguing about this thing. And it was ridiculous. And... Ultimately, it was really just based on stress. Our concern and worry and fears even involved in, 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 in the things that we were doing and the things that were to come. Uh, and so, even in the midst of our, uh, our argument or our conversation, as we're talking, I realize, well, we're just stressed. And as I realize we're stressed, I realize it's time to go to sleep. And so we go to bed. And we go to bed, and, and the next morning we're getting ready for the wedding, and it's been a wonderful day so far, and, and I know I'm excited, I know my family's excited, everybody's having uh, uh, all of the, the butterflies and the joy of celebrating marriage, the gift of marriage. And everything seems to go off without a hitch, and it's, it's been a wonderful, wonderful day. And all of that is good. So good, in fact, that we get through the wedding, and we're coming down the aisle, and, and my wife and I are, get through the wedding, that sounds so bad. I mean, we're celebrating this joyous gift of marriage. We're coming down the aisle, and we're so excited, and all of our friends are waiting at the end. And so we're giving hugs, and, and everybody's like, congratulations, and all these things. And at the end of the line, hmm, it's my dad. And my dad, waiting there, He's smiling, and he gives me a big hug, and he says, hey, bud, and of course, as you can see now, I start sobbing. I'm crying and crying and crying, the hardest cry maybe I've ever had in my life, and my dad says to me, as he picks up my head and wipes away a tear, it's okay. I'm here. Dad is here. 
<laughs> it's still an emotional story for me, as you can see. And I tell this story in this way because it's what I imagine experiencing. I imagine it being a glimpse of what we're all going to share. Because here's what the Word of God says to us today from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. You might say like a wedding feast. And then the Word says this. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. And the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. I imagine the way my dad hugged me, and wiped away my tears, and said, it's okay, I'm here. I imagine us experiencing that with our Heavenly Father. See, maybe you don't have a story like mine with your dad. Or maybe you don't have the same story. Or maybe your story is completely different, but the way that God has injected his presence into your life, interjected in the midst of, of, of what seemed like a situation where there was nothing good happening, or there was this overwhelming shroud of fear and brokenness and worry and concern over your life. And then your heavenly Father stepped in and reminded you that it's okay, because he's with you. He's with you in the midst of those fears that he is able to deliver you from, that he is able to cast out, that he is able to overwhelm with his love, the love that we see in the death and resurrection of Jesus. That he's with you. And because he is with you, he promises that even now he's able to wipe away tears through those who care for you, through his deliverance, through his love. He's able to cast away those shrouds just as he did at the cross. And his promise is that on that day, on that day where we will be at the wedding feast of the Lamb of God, on that day, the shroud of fear the shroud of worry, the shroud of brokenness, the sheet spread of sin over each and every nation, death will be swallowed up forever. And our Heavenly Father will wipe away our tears. The tears from your face and my face. He will take away any shame or disgrace. He will lift us up, hold us close, and not just say it's okay, but say what he said in the garden. It's very good. You are here. It's very good that you and I will be with him forever. See, I realized those tears that day that I shared, that I sobbed out, were a release of incredible emotion from the day. But ultimately, they were not tears of sadness or suffering any longer, but tears of joy. And they were so overwhelming that even now, I still remember them. But I remember them fondly. Because I realized that the dad that I know, and thankfully he's healthy and well, that dad was simply giving me a glimpse of the dad that we all share. The Heavenly Father, who is exemplified by good fathers and sometimes good mothers, good grandparents, good caretakers and caregivers throughout our lives. Our Heavenly Father who loves us, who cares for us, 
Our Heavenly Father, who gave up his one and only Son that we would be saved. Our Heavenly Father, whose love is so deep, whose care is so strong. Our Heavenly Father, that drowns our sin, that swallows up death forever, and raises us up to him, to the warmth of his embrace to the wiping away of our tears, to the promise that it is good and that he is with us and we shall be with him forever. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ojos fiaré, en te 
está, descansaré en tu poder, pues tú yo soy hasta el Together, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thankful that you're able to join us this morning for our online worship. We give thanks to God for this opportunity to hear His Word and to be gathered in this way. We encourage you, of course, to gather in person with us at Trinity at 11 a.m. each and every Sunday. Know that Jesus loves you, and so do I. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.